For anyone beginner to the Azure Cloud, going to the Azure portal is a natural move. The Azure portal is the easiest way to get started with Azure because it have the visual representation of all the resources that we have in our subscription. And when we want to create a new resource, we would be guided through a few templates to parameterize our resources, to configure our resources using the required parameters and so on. So the creation of resources there is very easy and convenient. In this video, I show you how to get started with the Azure portal in order to create a web application and an app service plan. So let's get started here. From within my Azure subscription, I go to create a new resource. And from here, I can choose one of the resources available within Microsoft Azure Cloud. So whether that is web application or database, container applications, and so on. From here, I go to select web app. And then here I will go through these different steps to configure and create my web application. So first, an application should be uh, should live within an Azure subscription. So if you have multiple Azure subscriptions, you select the one you want to use for for that uh, resource. So for me here, I'll select this one, and then I go to create a resource group. A resource group is a sort of a logical isolation for your resources. So if you have multiple applications, you typically would deploy an application per resource group or an environment per resource group. For me here, I'll go to create a new resource group or you can use one of your existing resource groups. So if I go to create a new one, I'll call this one RG. So it starts with RG, that's my conventional, my naming convention that I'm uh, using. RG stands for resource group. I click OK. And then I should uh, provide a name for my web application. So I'll check this name if it does exist. So note that name will be appended to a URL, to a public URL within uh, with dot Azure websites dot net. So make sure that name is available. And then here for publish option, you can choose whether to deploy a web application, Docker container or static web application. We'll stick with code. And um, this will allow you to deploy your own application that could be either um, .NET application with .NET Core or .NET Framework, Java application, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, and many more. So let's choose for this demo Java 11. And then we'll still stick with Java SE for embedded web server. And then we'll choose Linux as operating system. That could be also Windows. And then we select a region where my web application will be hosted. So Microsoft Azure is available in uh, lots of regions uh, around the globe. And from here, we can select uh, one of these regions to host our, our web application. So for me here, I go to select West Europe. So you we would typically select the region near your customers and or the region where you have the least uh, latency for your application architecture. And then next here, when we create a web application, we need also to create an Azure app service plan that will manage how my application could scale out or scale in. Um, so to do that here, Azure will provide us with a default configuration with an app service plan name that is auto-generated. And we can also create a new one if you want to, uh, to, to, to update it. And then we can choose the size of that app service plan. So if we uh, choose a spec picker right here, We will see the different options available depending on whether we want to use this application for dev test environment for production or for an isolated environment. And that will give you different CPU and memory available along with different uh, features and functionalities available for your web applications. I select, I'll continue with the default configuration with the premium V2. And then I have another configuration here for zone redundancy that will enable my application to be a uh, zone redundant. Uh, this means it will be actually duplicated across different availability zones in Azure. I don't need this for this demo, so I'll just keep it disabled. And then I go next to the deployment, where here I have the option to specify deployment settings to get uh, the application code and compile it inside App Service and then deploy it into App Service uh, using GitOps approach. I don't need that actually for this demo. Uh, and next we have monitoring and that will enable me to use or to create another instance in Azure, which is application insights, which will help me to get uh, resources uh, or to get metrics and logs from my app service in order to monitor my application. I don't need this, so let's keep it uh, disabled. Then uh, tags. 
Here we can specify one or more tags for our resources in order to, uh, for example, to, to be able to search the among the dozens or the hundreds of the Azure resources that you have in your subscription to make it easier to find these resources. So you can specify the tag you wanna write here. The next, if all of this configuration is valid, when we go to review and create, we should uh, have a green tick right here. That says for me now, now, yes, I can go to create this resource. So let's go to create this resource. And the creation here will take just a few seconds to create the three resources, which are going to be the resource group, the app service, and the app service plan. And once the creation is successful, now we get that uh, alert telling, yes, the resources were created successfully and we get a button to go to the resource. This will take us to the web app created. Or we have here another link to uh, go to the resource group that, were that was created. So I click on that resource group. And from within here, I can see the resources that were created. Uh, we have a lag for showing the web app. So if I click to refresh, then it shows right here. So we have the resource group created, the app service plan, and the Azure app service. Let's go to that app service. And when we go to the overview on the dashboard right here, we should get a link to browse that web application, which is this link right here. If I open it in a new window, then that will give me or that will um, take me to my web application deployed in Azure. So this is a Java application uh, behind. So it shows me this default template until I go to deploy my own web application. Great. Uh, so remember this uh, workshop was well documented on this GitHub repository. If you go to uh, the folder portal web app, you will find all the steps that we have done today for this workshop. Follow me in the next videos to show you how we can create the same resources using the Azure CLI tool and then using the RM template and then using the bicep template. Thank you.